morning. Welcome to First Unitarian Church of Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm Samantha Namath, the Director of Faith Development, and am leading today's worship service. It's wonderful to have you all with us today. Also leading worship are the Reverend Sarah Stewart, our Interim Director of Music, Allegra Martin, Assistant Director of Faith Development, Abigail Hannaford Riccardi, Assistant Director of Music, James Haupt, and Eugene Rossi, our broadcast tech. Additionally, we are very pleased to welcome our children's choir today for their debut performance. Here at First Unitarian Church, we strive in loving fellowship to honor the sacred, connect with each other, and to serve justice. We are, well, we are a welcoming congregation. Whatever your age, race, class, nationality, sexual orientation, or gender identity, we are delighted to have you with us this morning. For those that are joining us online, you can like this video to help others find us and subscribe to our channel to find more content. The newsletter is the best way to stay in touch and to join our other programs like Face Development. If you would like to receive our e-newsletter, please go to firstunitarian.com and click subscribe to our newsletter at the bottom of any page. Everyone is welcome to come to the social hour in the church parlor after the service. If you're a newcomer, please stop by the welcome table in the church parlor to pick up a gift bag so we can get to know each other much better. Today is the last day to donate items for the Haitian collection. With your support, we were able to provide four carfuls of clothing, diapers, shoes, and other personal items to more than 200 Haitian refugees living in Worcester. Additionally, we provided two nights of hot meals and a double stroller for a family with a newborn and a toddler. A special thanks to the social justice team who spearheaded this effort in a time that was dire for the newly arrived Haitian families. If you would like to continue to support for this effort, please see Lisa McWalters or join the Social Justice Committee. Also, there are copies of the CM Pride, a free LGBTQ plus magazine for Central Massachusetts, and they're available in the Bancroft room for anyone who would like one. Also, for our faith development families, next Sunday, come join some of the UU Sisterhood ladies for some fun to learn to make holiday cookies in the church kitchen. This is for our K through eighth graders. You'll watch the demonstration, learn safety tips, make a batch of cookies to sample, and go home with a recipe for you and your family to make over the holidays. This is the day the Lord has made. The wheel of the year has turned again. Once more, the Thanksgiving season has arrived. How shall we sing our song of gratitude now? For what shall we give thanks? For this moment, for friends near and far, for our breath, for love, for courage and clarity, for strength, for delight, for laughter, for beauty, for the tables round which we gather, for the food we enjoy with friends, seasoned with love and memory, for the sun, and the moon and the stars and sky, for the trees who have seen so much and still stand proud, stretching themselves to the sky, for the bright voices of children, for the wisdom of elders, for actions that bless the world, for hard work that makes a difference, for music and art and celebration, for generosity, for compassion, for endurance, for joy, or hope. For all these things, we give thanks as we worship together. Pascal is going to light our chalice this morning. In the spirit of love. Now please rise with me in body or spirit as we reaffirm our covenant. 
in the truth, in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God in the service of all. Now, if you would join us for our hymn, Gather the Spirit, number 347 in your gray hymnal. Hello. For today's Tale of the Day is a really great story about a wonderful time after church. It is called The Last Stop on Market Street, and Abby has created a wonderful visual for us all, if you want to turn your attention to Abby. CJ pushed through the church doors, skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped on his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella, saying, how come we have to wait for the bus in all this wet? The trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one with a big straw drinking? C 
CJ looked for a really long time, but he never saw a straw. From the bus stop, he watched the water pool over flower petals, watched the rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in and gave CJ a big wave and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't have a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We have a bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them and it sighed and sagged as the doors swung open. They sat up front and the man across the way was tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar and Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon and she really made sure that CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped and lurched forward and stopped and Nana hummed as she knitted. How come we always have to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go anywhere. You know, I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie has herself a new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling really sorry for himself. A man climbed aboard that bus with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? What do you know about seeing, Nana said. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses too, the man said, sniffing the air. And ma'am, that's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today. And Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her big, deep laugh. Two older boys got on the bus with headphones on, and CJ watched as they moved on and stood by the back. Ooh, sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You have the real thing sitting right across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? But CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. And Nana closed hers too. And so did CJ. And so did the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus and out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors going over the waves. He saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky. He saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. And CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him a feeling of magic. The song ended and he opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at a coin that CJ had in his hand and CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis, the bus driver said. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus. There were crumbling pavements and broken down doors and graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what is beautiful. CJ then saw a perfect rainbow arcing over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again at the bus rounding the corner, going out of sight. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window and he said, I'm glad we're here. I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ, now come on. And now, without further ado, we have a very special performance.
Please join me in our common prayer number 512 in your gray hymnal in a responsive reading. The response will appear on your screen as well. For the expanding grandeur of creation, worlds known and unknown, galaxies beyond galaxies, filling us with awe and challenging our imaginations, we give thanks this day. For this fragile planet Earth, its times and tides, its sunsets and seasons, we give thanks this day for the joy of human life, its wonders and surprises, its hopes and achievements. We give thanks this day for our human community, our common past and future hope, our oneness transcending all separation, our capacity to work for peace and justice in the midst of hostility and oppression. We give thanks this day for high hopes and noble causes, for faith without fanaticism, for understanding of views not shared, we give thanks this day. For all who have labored and suffered for a fairer world, who have lived so that others might live in dignity and freedom, we give thanks this day. For human liberty and sacred rights, for opportunities to change and grow, to affirm and choose, we give thanks this day. We pray that we may live not by our fears, but by our hopes, not by our words, but by our deeds. Please continue your own thoughts and prayers in silence. we share the joys and sorrows of our church with one another. Ginny Johnson lights a candle of love for all those who will find themselves alone this Thanksgiving. May they find love and comfort and companionship in their lives. Jen Daly lights a candle asking for prayers for her mom, Joanne. Tuesday, she is undergoing a heart procedure. A mother in the congregation lights a candle for her son, who is struggling with mental health challenges. And the Melnick family light a candle in memory of Hyla Melnick, who passed away this week. Beloved mother and grandmother to Ken, Laura, Caroline, and Jacob. Our prayers for healing and peace are with all of these people. We know there are those prayers that go unspoken among us, and so we reach out to one another in compassion as we say together the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Once a month here at First Unitarian Church, we are privileged to share our collection with an organization whose mission is aligned with ours. In keeping with our theme this morning of gratitude, abundance, and sharing what we have, we are taking this morning's collection to support the Worcester County Food Bank. And Jean McMurray, the CEO of Worcester County Food Bank, is here to tell us more. Thank you, Reverend Stewart. Good morning, friends. It is a pleasure to be back with you in person 
again since my first visit in November 2018. And on behalf of the Worcester County Food Bank, I want to thank Terry Field for the kind invitation to return, to the youth group for their food drive collection, and to each of you for your support through the Faith in Action donation program. The food bank's distribution of donated food is essential, and it's only possible because of you. We're providing 39% more food to our network of food pantries than a year ago, and together we're helping 44% more people. Neighbors like Maura, who wrote, to the good folks at the food bank and all the Worcester food pantries, a heartfelt thank you for giving food to me and my friend this past spring. We had run out of food stamps and had no food and no money to buy more. You saved us. Another neighbor, Sam, told us that he is working a second job just to cover the high cost of food that his family needs. The food bank's advocacy efforts are as essential as our food distribution and have huge impact. This school year, 400,000 more kids in Massachusetts can count on eating two nutritious meals every day at school. Thanks to your support of the food bank, we and many others across Massachusetts urged the state to fund free school meals for all. And we succeeded. As one grateful parent said, my daughter and I don't have to worry about school lunch debt this year or feel the shame and the stigma that come along with it. Even with free school meals, some families still experience food shortages. As Janine told us, since the monthly child tax credit payments ended in December of 2021, our SNAP food stamp benefits run out sooner. Free school meals are helping to stretch our budget, and the food bank and our local food pantry are there when we need them. More than 50% of the funds the food bank needs for our food distribution and advocacy come from you and individuals throughout Worcester County. And we're very grateful for that strong base of local support. We are also grateful for people who want to volunteer and contribute their time. Most of our partner food pantries are managed by faith-based groups, and they depend on volunteers 100%. So if you or someone you know would like to volunteer, the food bank can help make a connection to a food pantry nearby. And if someone needs help, they can call us and they can visit our food bank uh, website, which is foodbank.org, and then just click on the button that says find food. Thank you for your attention this morning and for sustaining the food bank as a resource our neighbors can depend on. And from all of us at the Worcester County Food Bank, we want to wish you and your families a very happy Thanksgiving and a peaceful and joyful holiday season. Thank you. Thank you. The ushers will receive the morning's offering, or you may scan the QR code in the order of service. If you're online, you can text the number on your screen or go to firstunitarian.com and click Give Online at the top of any page. Everything we do as a church is thanks to your support. If you give online, the church will pay the fees associated with online giving, so 100% of your gift will support the Worcester County Food Bank. I invite your generous contributions for this good work in our community.
Today's reading is another Today's reading is another children's story that is called Fry Bread. The story of Fry Bread is by Kevin Noble Malliard and is a story of American Indians embracing community and culture in the face of oppression. Fry Bread was first made 150 years ago by the Navajo. Despite colonial efforts throughout American history to weaken tribal governments, fracture indigenous communities, uh, exiled natives strive to retain those old traditions and they created new ones, especially for food. Survival meant adapting and those ancestors, isolated from their familiar meats and fruits and vegetables, got by with what they had. Without familiar indigenous crop of corn, historic farming practices and dietary traditions drastically changed. Many tribes trace the origin of modern Indian cooking to this government-caused deprivation from federal rations of powdered, canned, and other dry government-issued foods, fry bread was born. Fry bread is good. Flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar, all mixed together in a big bowl. Fry bread is shape. Hands mold the dough, flat like a pancake, round like a ball or puffy, like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove, the fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet and the bubbles sizzle and pop. Fry bread is color, golden brown, tan, or yellow, deep like coffee, sienna, or earth. Light like snow and cream, warm like rays of sun, Fry bread is flavor. Beans and soup smells like tacos, cheese, and vegetables. Delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. Fry bread is time on weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together with family and friends. Fry bread is art. Sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft, shared from teacher to student. A cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread is history. The long walk, the stolen land, strangers in our own world. With unknown food, we made new recipes from what we had. Fry bread is place. Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California. Cities and lands we call home. Fry bread is nation. Abenaki, Apache, Narragansett, Navajo, Nipmuc, hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Fry bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small. North, south, east, and west, brown, yellow, black, white, familiar and foreign, old and new, we come together. Fry bread is us. We are still here, elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn, change and survive. Fry bread is you. On the idea of fry bread bringing so many traditions and families and people together, we have a presentation for everyone. From some of our Bicoda, our middle school youth group, will be presenting the Thanksgiving soup communion for us. So I would like to invite all my Bicoda friends that are in the skit to come join and take your spots, get ready and get set. Listen, listen, I have a story to share. Listen and watch. Watch and see if you see someone you know in the story. Watch and see if you see yourself in the story.
Once upon a time, there was a small village full of friendly people just like you and me. They were just like you and me, except they did not get their food at the grocery store. They did not have grocery stores. They had to grow all their own food. One person grew leeks. I've got leeks. One person grew kale. You know kale is good for you. One person grew tomatoes. I've got tomatoes. One grew sweet potatoes. Yum, sweet potatoes. And another, eggplant. Who doesn't love a purple vegetable? One person grew carrots. And who doesn't love an orange vegetable with hair? And one person grew onion. I've got onions. And one person grew lentils. <laughs> and they were all grateful for what they had. And everyone lived in peace and harmony. Peace and harmony? Have you ever tried eating nothing but leeks all day, every day? It's awful. And I've asked that so-and-so over there to share some of their sweet potatoes, but they won't even give me any. Peace and harmony, my eye. Oh, so it's all about you, is it? Well, if I gave you my sweet potatoes, then I wouldn't have anything to eat at all. Sweet potatoes are hard to eat every day, but they're better than nothing. And so our friendly villagers were not so grateful, and maybe not so happy with their other neighbors. And everyone was afraid of not having enough, so they did not share at all. A moment for contemplations. Are there a part of yourself that you are holding back? Are there parts of yourself that you are not sharing? Why? So this, start, so this sorry state of affairs existed in the village all season long. Everyone had just enough, but no one enjoyed it until... I can't believe these fools don't even know what a lentil is. I mean, they're high in protein and in calcium. They're one of the first foods that was ever cultivated by human beings. Well, I've got... I've eaten as many lentils as I can stand and I have more than I can ever possibly eat. So I'm actually gonna share some and show them what a lentil is. What do you have there? Oh, just some soup. Would you like some? Oh, yes I would. Well, it's not done yet. In fact, I do believe it needs some kale. Well, I have some of that. He, he told me what you were doing, and I thought I could, you could use some tomatoes. But when you're done, could I have some soup, too? Your leeks are stupid. Sweet potatoes aren't <laughs> even sweet. Gee, this soup smells so good. I bet it'd be even better if it had some leeks and sweet potatoes. And just like that, everyone shared what they had, hopeful that they would benefit from the end result. We all have something to give, but what we have to share may seem uninteresting, insignificant, or even not enough. But it really can become amazing when blended with the right combination of ingredients. Our community here is like that. When we all do our part and bring ourselves to the table, we all benefit. A moment for contemplation. What do you bring to the metaphorical soup pot of this community? What do you have to give? It 
It wasn't long before the soup was ready, and the eight villagers discovered that they not only had enough for themselves, but for their entire community. They invited everyone they knew to come and share their soup. We look upon all that has been given in generosity, in love, and in the spirit of community, and we realize that we have much to be grateful for. In a spirit of thanksgiving, we ask you to share the gifts of community. As we share together, we grow together. We also want to think about what we are grateful for this Thanksgiving season. Please take a moment as you receive your leaves to write down something you are grateful for. Thank you for taking the time to share your gratitude. At the end of service, please add it to our gratitude tree in the dining hall. Thank you for participating in our skit. And now the choir will be singing the anthem, Many Gifts, One Spirit.
Now, if you'd please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our hymn number 67. We sing now together in your gray hymnal. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no, no evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the holy. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit forever. Amen. <laughs> 